Hello and welcome to EV Review Ireland. My name is Derek Riley. Today we're going to be looking at the Opel Vivaro E, an all-electric van. So let's get started. Today's video is sponsored by EasyGo, Ireland's largest EV charging network. With their fleet management solution, employees can charge their cars and vans at home, at work, or on the public charging network, where there are more than 1,200 charge points. With the EasyGo fleet solution, a fleet manager can ensure vehicles are charged on a night rate electricity, and the fleet drivers can travel across Ireland and access the public charging network. Just like with fuel cards, fleet managers can now manage all electric charging costs in a single monthly bill. Usual format, we're going to look at the front, the side, in the back, and then go into the front cabin and then head off out in the road and have a bit of a spin. Um, so this is the exact same looking van as the regular Vivaro, which is an internal combustion engine. So you, you, it'd be very difficult to see whether this is an electric van or not. Uh, and there is only one little mini E on the back of it beside the Vivaro name. Um, but looking at the front of it, I think it's very stylish. This is the sportive trim. So in Ireland, we've got two different trims and this is the, the top level. So price is starting at 36,885. That's including VAT, excluding delivery, doesn't include the government grants. And then the top level trim is an extra 2,000 on top of that. So 38,000. So with the 36,000 starting price, that would be, if you were to buy an equivalent uh, internal combustion engine version, that'd be 24. So it's 50% more expensive, but you have to look at the total cost of ownership. What's the running cost going to be? What's the price of fuel, servicing, all that kind of stuff. Um, so make sure you're taking that into account as much as that uh, retail price might take you back. What's the total cost of ownership? But the front of it, I really like it, really like the headlights, uh, there's enough chrome on it for me. You've got the daylight running lights, um, fog lights down here as well, and a nice colour coded on the sportive trim. Um, tasteful, and I like this colour as well, um, really nice. Let's have a look around the side. Around the side, up here you have the charging flap, so it's CCS Type 2. Um, and obviously it has... A, on DC, it's got a 7.4 kilowatt AC and DC then it goes up to 100 kilowatt because it's based on the Solantis platform. So this is what you're going to see in the Citroen, the Peugeot commercial vehicles, but also the Opel Mokka, the E208, the E2008. Uh, so, uh, but it's great that they've moved this up towards the front so that when you're pulling in, usually you'd have your fuel filler cap around this neck of the woods uh, on a regular combustion engine vehicle. But the fact that it's up near the front, the cable can reach up to it. Nice size wheels. I would like the wing is probably a small bit bigger just for visibility. You've got your indicator, good sized doors, and they open up nice and wide. And you have your sliding door, and you've got a second sliding door on the far side as well. So it's great to have that. You get your steel bulkhead, uh, and we'll talk about the, the rear space when we go around the back. But um, your traditional fuel cap will be down here. It's blanked off, you can't get into it. But uh, the comes in two lengths, same height, L1 and L2, two trims and two battery sizes. So depending on the size, depending on the length, um, and the smaller battery size, the 50 kilowatt has a greater weight because you're all your 3.1 ton total. Uh, so with the smaller battery size, it's obviously not as heavy, so you're able to carry more. So it's about 1200 kgs, whereas the 77 kilowatt hour battery, it brings up the overall weight unladen, so you can't exceed the 3.1 tons. So then it has a 1000 kg uh, payload internally, and then you've got the trailer, it can tow up to another 1000 kg as well. So very capable van. Let's have a, I'll spin, around, I'll spin the van around and let's have a look in the back. Nice rear end to this. You've got your good visible bulk um, taillights, but not protruding too much. Um, you've got the Vivaro E, so you know that it's an electric one, but if that wasn't there, you wouldn't know much difference. Your Opel sign or your Vauxhall sign, uh, depending on what country you're in, uh, it'd be remiss of me not to say that it was, is the winner and holder of the International Van of the Year, and it shares that with its sisters or cousins or brothers or siblings, the Peugeot and the Citroen versions of this van. Doors will go to 90 degrees, and then they also have the release um, where you can bring it around to 180. So good loading size. 
good height. Uh, it takes the width of your palette. Let's have a look on the inside of it. Good size in the back of this van and it's uh, at height that it can still get into multi-storey car parks and underground basement car parks. Uh, and what I really like is the fact that you have sliding door number one and also then sliding door number two. Um, so great access either side if you needed to be a delivery side of things you could be on the right uh, the non-traffic side uh, which would always be better for getting in and getting out and loading in and loading out. Uh, width is enough for your palette. I'll stick the, uh, the dimensions up on the screen. But yeah, good. What's it like inside the Opel Vivaro E electric van? Uh, we'll start from the driver's door and work our way over. As I mentioned, I would like to see a larger wing mirror, but I appreciate aerodynamics, etc. But I've seen a larger ones on commercial vehicles, so I'd like to see that. On the top of the door itself, you've got your electrically adjusted side mirror, um, left, right, up, down, and you've got your electric windows front and rear. Moving over, you've got some blanked off buttons here. and This is supposed to be top level trim. Maybe they're in relation to the combustion engine one, or just the Irish spec is different to uh, the UK or continental spec. You've got your headlight adjustment, big, big dash, good, durable. You've got a, a document holder pocket here. You have a coffee cup holder there, but it won't take my water bottle. So it would be for more of a, more of a, more of a tapered keep cup kind of a system. On the door itself, you've got really good, you've got a pocket in the door, you've got a handle at the top, you've got the actual door opener itself, and then a massive, no, I mean cavernous um, door well, you probably could call it. Um, and so that is, on the door, good heavy. You've got your accelerator and your brake pedals. Uh, steering wheel is good size. Nothing multifunction on this one, uh, but there are multifunction options available. It has reach, it has rake, so that's good to have that there. You've got a uh, mainly analog driver display. You have your kilometers per hour on one side, on the other side, then you've got your percentage of power that you're using, and um, whether you're charging by regenerative braking uh, or you're putting the shoe down battery percentage, but also whether how you're driving it. Um, uh, on the steering wheel itself, then you've got your lights on the left, you've got your um, wipers on the right, you have your uh, audio controls on the right uh, on a secondary stock, and then on the left, you, on the secondary stock, you've got your cruise control. So yeah, not bad. Uh, I would like to see more uh, the multifunction version of this. I have seen it in, in other reviews across the water in the United Kingdom. Um, Let's plug it in and turn it on. So the first turn will get the uh, get it up and running But you have to hold the key forward for you to get the bing Which sounds like this And you have a little ready sign and from uh, pain point And that kicks well. in the radio so things like We can turn it down. So then on the actual driver uh, the infotainment system you've got a color display You've got your vehicle settings, you've got where you're getting your source from, whether it is uh, the actual radio itself or whether you're using USB. Uh, then you've got your settings, you've got your apps, uh, and then you've got the phone option then as well. Traditional volume. Um, then you have your uh, air conditioning, etc. So this one has the air conditioning on it. Uh, you've got your temperature and you've got your speed. Then you've got your central locking, your hazard lights, your 12 volt cigarette lighter and your USB type A kind of a phone shelf kind of thing here, but it just flies all over the place. A little uh, recess for a pen. Again, it'll be gone in a couple of seconds. And normally on the combustion engine version, you would have a gear lever here, but this is the drive mode selector. And then whether you're going reverse, forward, neutral, uh, drive, and then two stage regenerative braking. Um, so at standard, it starts off with park, put down the brake, and then you can just move the little toggle switch down to drive. And if you want two stage, you press the B button then. You want to go into reverse, um, and this, uh, it's not a camera, but it is rear view, rear se reversing sensors, um, and then into neutral. Your handbrake would traditionally be down here, but it's an electronic handbrake now, so there's a little button here for putting on the handbrake or taking it off. You can hear it engaging there. Good bench seat. Uh, pull that up. You have some storage in underneath. Uh, you put your charging cables there potentially or other stuff. You've got three three-point seat belts. You've got your two three. Um, no storage up here. You've got your ring visor. No light. 
you've got another sun, sorry, sun visor, not wing visor. And then on the top here, then you've got whether the lights operate with the doors open, you've got your reading lights, and then whether people are wearing their seatbelts. Uh, rear view mirror, no good in this with the steel bulkhead, but there are a couple of options in this. So as much as there are two battery sizes, there are two trim levels, and then there are two lengths of van. So there's lots of combinations there. Then there's going to be the combi, uh, Vivaro combi E. So that will have a second row of seats. So you can have people in the back and some loading space. And then on the passenger side of the Opel family, you will have the Zafira Life, Zafira Life, apologies. And that will be either eight seater or nine seater, depending on the specification as to how, what trim level you want on that. So they're great for the likes of larger families or airports or taxis, etc. airport shuttles. Over on this side then, you have a um, storage area at the top. Um, you've got some, again, more little shelves, but again, stuff will just be falling around. You've got a big pocket, and then on, uh, this, the, the mirror of this side on that side, huge door bin, another handle pocket area, and another handle area at the top. Well equi equipped, I've seen better, but for what you get, um, it's not bad. Yeah. People will be happy driving this. Let's take it out on the road. If you think this van may be for you or your business, you can contact EasyGo and get your fleet driver set up on an e few card by clicking the link on the screen or in the description. What's it like driving the Opel Vivaro E? Really good. I love an electric van and those of you who watch this channel, if you haven't already subscribed, that's a hint. Um, I love a van and I especially now love an electric van. So this model I'm driving is the long wheel. So it comes in two lengths, L1 and L2. This is the L2. The heights are the same on both. So it's the H1 is what they're calling it. And I've put, already put the, 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 um, up on the screen the dimensions. This is the 50 kilowatt hour battery. Um, and it is in the sportive trim. So it's the more expensive one. And the color that it is, is moonstone gray. So beautiful van. It's nice to have the bit of extras in it. Um, they're all based on the Stellantis platform that we've talked about. That'll be the same for Peugeot. It'll be the same for Citroen as well. All vans, no matter what trim, no matter what battery size, will be getting the same electric motor. It's a 100 kilowatt motor. It has 136 PS and it has 260 Newton meters of torque. Very sprightly. With this van, because I've got the 50 kilowatt hour battery, I'll be able to put over 1200 kg in the back of it and tow another 1000 kg. Um, if I went for the 77 kilowatt hour battery, the rear load capacity weight wise would drop to 1000 kg, but you can still tow 1000 uh, kg as well. So um, overall, very dependent on the size, um, sorry, depending on the range of battery that you're looking for will dictate what you will need, um, what you can put in the back, but weight wise. All vans will have three drive modes and two stage regenerative braking as well. AC charging on this van is 7.4 kilowatts. Uh, so it'll top up overnight. And then DC or fast charging, it can take up to 100 kilowatts. Nice clean, big display, which I think is great. Steering wheel is a good size. Everything is built for, um, wearability and wipeability. It's a van, but it's still comfortable enough. The seat, is, the seat is good. It's got some good bolster support on the side as well. Um, I'm happy with it. I pulled over because I want to make sure that we get all of the specifications for the Vivaro E. So on this edition trim of them here on my phone, um, or sorry, across both base model, and then this obviously carries over to the sportive trim as well. You're getting the storage underneath, the passenger, the, the bench, you're getting the sixth way driver seat and you've got an armrest here as well. There you go. Um, electric handbrake, driver and passenger airbags. You've got cruise control on both models. You've got a full size spare wheel, which is underneath the van itself. You've got a three and a half inch color dashboard display, two sliding doors, which I think are really good. Remote control deadlocking, electric front one touch windows, uh, heated and electrically adjusted door mirrors. Stereo radio, USB and four speakers, Bluetooth phone, steering 
column remote audio controls. We talked about that when we were doing the cab run through and then a digital audio DAB radio. Then on this level, which is the sportive trim, you get air conditioning, which is great, especially on the likes of the today. Um, you probably, we probably get about four days in the country uh, that um, in the year that we need air combo. When we need it, we need it. We've got a seven inch color display with smartphone projection. You can use mirror link or Android auto. We've got the Bali color bumpers outside except on the red one, which is interesting. Uh, we've got front fog lights, we've got the LED running daylights we talked about, we've got the rear parking sensors. Um, so these are all on the sportive trim, automatic wipers and lights, uh, the electronic folded mirrors, uh, which I'd like to be bigger, uh, the acoustic windscreen, uh, and then the full size wheel covers as well. So lots of good stuff there with regards to um, the fit and finish, so the two trims that are there. We talked about the prices already. The uh, Edition trim comes in at 36,895, and then the Sportive trim, which is this one, comes in at 38,895. The um, 77 kilowatt has a WLTP of 330, um, and then the 50 kilowatt has a WLTP of um, 230. Now I'm seeing the guts of 200. This is unladen, I'm just pattering around town. So depending on how you're gonna drive it is gonna dictate exactly how it's gonna work out. Um, but I've been saying 77 kilowatt, apologies, it's a 75 kilowatt uh, battery that's in it. Otherwise, hopefully you've enjoyed the review. Uh, if you can leave a like and subscribe and comment, let me know what you think of the vans. Today's video was sponsored by EasyGo, who are now offering e-fleet services to include home, workplace, and public charging network as well as fleet managers oversight of all costs and bills. For more info or to submit a quote, click the link on the screen or in the description. Excited to announce that I'm collaborating with Stavros 969. Stavros usually looks after lorries and trucks, but he is an EV driver himself and I went down with the Opel Vivaro E and he had a look around it. Make sure you subscribe to his channel. I'll put the link on the screen and in the description. Hit the notification bell because that review is coming out tomorrow morning. And for those that already follow Stavros, you will know that he is an EV driver himself with the Honda E and he's looking to review more stuff as well. Looking forward to it. That's my look around the Opel Vivaro E. The electric van section on this channel is starting to get busier and busier, so make sure you check out that playlist. I've looked at a lot of the LDVs and the Maxxes. I've got some Renault stuff coming down the line. I've got some Nissan stuff coming along the line. But today, the Opel Vivaro E, which will be the same platform based within the Stellantis group as the Peugeot, as the Citroen, um, it's great just to get my hands on it. You can see why it's such a popular van with that two battery sizes, um, so if you do need the range, it's within it. Um, huge order has gone in, in the United Kingdom for British gas. Uh, the irony is not lost on me that a fossil fuel burning company is using electric vans, but it's great to see that they're transitioning towards that space. But you can see, and over there, they've obviously gone with the, it's a Vauxhall brand over there, but the exact same van, just rebadged. Um, I really like it. I think it's good quality good range, the fact you've got towing capacities, you've got different variations with regards to the length. Hopefully you've enjoyed the review. If you can leave a like, subscribe, and let me know in the comment section what you think about the, the transition of the commercial world to electric vehicles such as this. And remember, if you think an EV is for you, leave it to me and I'll review. Thanks for watching. Did I record? Did press record? I did. <laughs> Good size in the back.